Working with stock photography has many benefits, but it can also have some limitations. This image that I downloaded from a stock photo site is perfect for a product layout I'm working on, but because of all the extra elements in the image, there really isn't much room left for the actual product. Now, since I didn't shoot this image myself, I can't really move things around and reshoot the image. But wouldn't it be great if I could simply grab one of these elements and just move it out of the way? Keep watching this video and I'll show you how I incorporate stock photography into my design work. So here we've got our original image. And the first thing I'm going to have to do is make some room by clearing out all of the different elements that I don't want. The one thing that I know I'm going to keep are these dried flowers right in the center here. But everything else I need to remove. So this uh, lemon down here, the lemon up here, the bowl of salt, the bowl of herbs here, and then these little sprigs I can remove as well along with this towel. All of this stuff I don't really need for my final layout. So I'm going to go through it one by one and just remove everything. So to remove things, I'm not really going to go too much into detail. You can use any technique you want to remove things. I'll show you a couple of the ones that I like to use. So I'll create a, a selection. I'm going to go up to Edit and use Content to Wear Fill. And once Content to Wear Fill appears, it shows me the highlighted areas that it's sampling from to in order to remove this. Now I notice that it's sampling parts of the bowl as well. So I'm just going to remove that so that it doesn't accidentally sample that. And I'm also going to remove the towel. I'm not sure why it selected that, but Adobe's artificial intelligence sometimes mystifies beyond belief. So uh, better to just remove these elements rather than wonder why a piece of bowl is appearing in your final fill. So with these elements removed, the final results look pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. Another way to remove things is the old-fashioned way. You can use a combination of the clone stamp and the healing brush. So the clone stamp does a pretty good job of cloning things in place. However, it doesn't do a very good job of blending things in place. So if I try to clone, let's say, this little flower out of the way, I'm going to try to line this up as best I can. And it did a pretty good job. Sometimes you'll notice that you'll end up with some hard edges around the patch that you've created. And in that scenario, you may want to try using the healing brush instead. And the healing brush is just the second brush down, not the spot healing, but just the healing brush. Um, you can also try using the patch tool as well, that works. I'm just gonna use a really big brush going to make a selection. I'm just going to start brushing away. And you'll notice that the healing brush does a better job of blending the surroundings into the patch itself. Now I've gone ahead and removed all of the different elements except for the flowers. Now I can go back in and decide what parts I want to bring back. So I'm going to go back to this adjusted layer that I have here. And all I did here was just, I noticed that the image was a little bit light. So I created a curves adjustment and adjusted the colors just to make it a little bit darker. And then I created a new layer, a merged layer. You can do that by hitting Control Shift Alt E on the PC or Command Option Shift E on the Mac. Now on my original adjusted layer, I'm going to make a duplicate of this bowl and this is going to be the first thing I'm going to keep. So to do this I'm going to select the object selection tool. For anyone working on older versions of Photoshop you're only going to see the quick selection tool and the magic wand. The object selection tool is a newer tool. I believe it's Photoshop 2020 and I'm just going to make sure that the mode is set to lasso and I'm just going to draw a lasso around the bowl. And there's our selection. It's a little bit rough in some spots. So we're going to go up to select and modify. 
and smooth. And I'm just going to smooth this out by 10 pixels. And then choosing my lasso tool, I'm going to go in and just fix up some of these bumps. So I'm just going to remove a few of these. And the way I'm doing this is uh, compress Alt to remove parts of your selection and you can press shift to add parts to your selection. And there's our final selection for our bowl. Nice and clean all the way around. Now I'm going to hit Control or Command J on the Mac in order to create a separate layer from our selection. Here is what we have. So there's our bowl separated onto its own layer. And I'm just going to name this layer. When you're working in Photoshop, anytime you create any kind of layout or if you're editing photos, it's always a great habit to get into of naming your layers. I've worked with designs that have several hundred layers and opening a file with all of these layers and have it saying layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four um, is a nightmare. It's, it's really hard to figure out what's what. So just get in the habit of naming all your layers. It'll also make it easier on someone else if they open up your file later on and they'll, they'll be able to find things. Um, I also try to color code things as well. That makes it easier to kind of group items together so that people who open your file, they know what is supposed to go together and what isn't. With my bowl finally created, I'm going to drag this above my layer where I masked everything out. Now, you'll notice obviously it doesn't look quite right because it's missing its shadow. So I'm going to temporarily bring back the original layer. I'm going to have a close look at the shadow. Whenever I create shadows in Photoshop, I always like to create shadows in stages because shadows are pretty complex items and depending on the size and shape of the object you're gonna have a very uh, dull shadow like a very dark shadow and it's going to be very pronounced curve or a crescent shape and in this case you're gonna have a nice soft shadow something really really light and it also looks like it's a little bit tapered and when you look at the bowl the bowl obviously has quite a taper on it as well so you have to take all of this into consideration when you're creating shadows or when you're replicating shadows. Now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this Shadow Soft. And I'm going to drag this underneath my herb bowl. Now you can also create a layer underneath by selecting, pressing Control or Command on the Mac. When you press the plus button, it automatically creates of the layer below the selected layer. So one other thing to consider before we start making shadows is the color of the shadow. Now the light obviously is coming in from the right hand side and it's reflecting off of this super bright white surface. Now the lights bouncing off the surface, bouncing off of the bottom of this bowl, creating a brighter shadow than normally when you're working on darker surfaces. So in this case, we're gonna to have to create a shadow that matches the original shadow's color. So what I like to do is on the shadow soft layer, I'm going to hit Control or Command on the Mac, click on the herb bowl to create a selection, and I'm going to just temporarily fill this with black. So I'm gonna hit Alt Backspace or Option Backspace on the Mac to fill with the foreground color. I'm going to deselect. So there's my shadow. I'm going to hit Control or Command T to transform. And I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. And I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And now I want to blur at least 100, about 110, 115 pixels. And then we're also going to adjust the opacity to about. 74, 75. You'll see when I move this shadow around that it looks good as a shadow, 
but it doesn't really suit this layout because the layout here has a reddish shadow. It's not gray or black in color. So we're gonna to have to match this a little better than I did with this example. So I'm gonna make another selection of my bowl. And this time I'm gonna choose my eyedropper. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna find the darkest shadow color in the layout. And one of the darkest colors is the lemon. But when you look really closely, you'll notice that the light is actually bouncing off the lemon and you've got more of an orange glow to the shadow. Whereas at the bowl, you've got a dark shadow, but it's only the darker color. It doesn't have any of this bright orange color in it. And I'm gonna select this color and go back to my layout. And I'm also gonna darken the color a bit. So once you have this color selected, you're going to just drag and darken the color a bit. Now I'm gonna press Alt Backspace or Option Backspace on the Mac to fill with that color. And I'm gonna drag it out. Make sure my opacity is back at 100. Now at this point what I like to do is I like to right click on the layer and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. Now the reason why I like to do this is so that I can work with the blur amount and I'm gonna go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and set this to 110 and if for some reason this isn't enough of a blur at this point I'd pretty much have to recreate my circle from my bowl and apply the Gaussian blur filter all over again but because I created a smart object, smart filters was enabled and the Gaussian blur is just underneath. So I can just double click on the Gaussian filter and I can make adjustments to the blur without worrying about recreating anything. Now I'm just gonna adjust the opacity so that it more closely matches the original. I noticed too that when I'm looking at this image, it has more of a shadow down at the bottom edge here and not so much on this side or the top as well. So what you want to do as well is create a mask. Make sure you have a nice big brush. Set the opacity to about 20%. So a quick way to adjust my opacity is just using the keyboard shortcuts one through zero on your keyboard. If you press one, it'll adjust the opacity to 10%. 2 adjusts to 20, 0 takes you back to 100, and you could even do numbers in between. So if you press 2 and 4, you'll get 24%, 6 and 7, you'll get 67%, and so on. So I'm going to do 20%, so press 2 on the keyboard, and I'm going to go make sure I'm on my mask, and I'm just going to mask out lightly the bottom part of this shadow. Now you'll notice it's not really doing a whole lot. You kind of have to go over a few times, but you want to be nice and subtle when you're doing this. You don't want to overdo it and destroy the shadow completely. Once you're happy with the way it looks, I'm gonna just adjust my opacity a little bit more. And then I'm gonna select both of my layers and click on the little folder to create a group out of those two layers and this will be my herb bowl. And now when we move it around, you'll notice the shadow moves along with it. And the shadow more closely matches what the original one looks like. If I move this in place of the original and bring back my other layer, so there's the placement of the original bowl but now I can grab that bowl and move it around wherever I need it and the shadow travels with it. Now the next piece that I'd need is let's say this lemon. This lemon has a darker shadow attached to it so I'm just going to make sure that I have the original layer selected. I'm gonna go to my object selection tool and I'm just gonna draw a marquee around it And again, Photoshop's artificial intelligence did a pretty good job of selecting it. A little bit bumpy here and there, but we're gonna select 
and modify and go to smooth and again smooth this out by 10 pixels and then using my lasso and that's L on the keyboard I'm just gonna go in and make some minor adjustments to a few areas press Control J or Command J on the Mac and this will be my lemon and I'm just gonna move my lemon over and now I'm gonna recreate my shadow so I'm gonna create a new layer underneath so press Control or Command press on the plus to create a new layer underneath and this will be my shadow soft I'm gonna control or command select the lemon and press alt backspace or option backspace on the Mac to fill with my foreground color and there is my fill control or command T to transform and I'm just gonna shrink this down a little and then again I'm gonna right click convert to smart object so that I can make adjustments to my blur if I need to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and for now leave it at 110 and this will be my main shadow and reduce my opacity so that it's not as intense you kind of have to build shadows together over multiple layers so in some cases you might have to create several layers of shadows so I sometimes create a soft shadow which is the really intense blur and then I duplicate this layer so I'm going to select my layer and I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control or command J and I'm going to call this one shadow mid I'm going to double click on the Gaussian blur and I'm going to reduce the Gaussian to about let's do 40 percent and I'm going to move it slightly closer to the lemon and then adjust the opacity until it just starts to blend in with the background might have to move it in a little bit more now looking at my shadow and the original I can see that because this lemon tapers a little bit the shadow disappears right around this edge and also up at this edge as well so I'm gonna have to go into my shadows and apply a mask to both of these and using my big soft brush set to black and make sure you're still at 20% opacity and I'm just going to slowly remove some of this shadow and then do the same thing with the other shadow layer as well And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to bring these above my merged layer. Press the folder icon to create a group. And then we're going to call this Lemon. And I'm going to bring back my Herb Bowl and move my Lemon into place. My Herb Bowl. Now I'm going to bring in some of the other elements that I have. And I'm just going to start moving these around to create my layout. Now, as you can see having these all separated out is a real time saver especially when you're trying to get the perfect layout and you don't have access to the original items to reshoot your photos it's great when you can do your own photography but when you can't this is probably the next best thing now i went ahead and i have a plate of pasta here i'm going to move my bowl out of the way a bit and now all I have to do is just trim my image there we go and we can just bring in some text and there's my complete layout now compare this to the original photo there is no way that I could have gotten this level of detail with all of the elements if I hadn't separated them and been able to move them around and as always if you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.